nuts. Here I have hazelnuts and almonds mixed together. 300 grams of hazelnuts and uh, 200 grams of almonds. They go into a bowl. The pits of bitter almond and the whole vial goes in. It gives an extremely strong almond flavor, much stronger than the uh, almond oil here you can find or the almond extract you can find in the grocery store. To that yeah. we add 150 grams of sugar. We add uh, at least 100 grams of cream of wheat during the first second world war that was used as a as a filler. If you don't have the good stuff cream of wheat hardly has any any flavor so you can get away with with stretching uh, your ingredients with something that has the same consistency roughly as the nuts and almonds. We add one egg, one whole egg, and one egg white. We're saving the uh, yolk for making the glaze later on. So crack carefully, you don't wanna lose it. Eggs are regular large eggs. The last item that goes into filling is just plain water between a third and a half a cup. I'm going to add a third first. You don't want it too runny, but you also don't want it too dry. And the water is mainly to make it into kind of like a moist dough and have enough moisture for the cream of wheat to absorb and not um, make the whole filling too dry dry, you can see it here, dry and crumbly material. So I'm gonna add the rest of the water. So it's we're up to half a cup. You don't want it as wet as that little pile you see in there. You want it all incorporated that it's kind of almost like a crumbly play-doh or wet sand is probably the closest. Okay. Now everything seems to be mixed together. Everything seems to be moist and to check if you got the right consistency, you pick up a ball and you just clump it together. It should be forming a fairly heavy clump. For the dough part, we're actually, uh, no, it's a two-step process. We have the filling, it's sitting over there, and now we're adding 450 grams to 500 grams of flour. Now we're adding two flat, uh, flat spoons, tablespoons of baking powder. You can see that's what the edge of the baking powder can is for, to scrape a spoon flat. One, two. Now we're adding 150 grams of sugar. All less. I actually prefer the dough less sweet. So I'll probably call it a halt at 125. Okay. And now we're adding two eggs. And we're adding 200 grams of soft butter. This one I left out of the fridge. And I have a little bit of water, three to four tablespoons of water on standby if the dough is too crumbly. I want a smooth dough. So I'm not gonna put any in right now. I'm gonna just knead it and see what comes out. If it's too crumbly, I add the water. You could also add milk if you wanted to. Grabbing motions to squish everything together with the butter and the eggs. As the dough comes together, I can already see it's gonna be too crumbly. So I'm going to add about two tablespoons of water and see if it makes a difference. If not, I add some more water. But it's moist, getting a bit moist. The dough is coming together, almost ready. We don't need any more water. What you want is a smooth, relatively speaking, we're not done yet, dough and not much left in your, everything is incorporated. Dough has come together, so now we are flouring a surface just to knead it a little bit more. And the dough is gonna be soft, as you can see, but it's not sticky, it doesn't stick to my hands. We are just going to give it a final knead that I um, can't get in the 
bowl I was using. Now we're rolling out the dough. You want a rectangle wider than it is long because you're actually rolling it this way towards you. If you have a crack in there, the dough is sticky enough that you can do a patch job. Okay, now we're putting the uh, filling in and we're spreading it out the scientific way. If it doesn't move or it sticks to your hands, get your fingers wet and then nothing will stick and it will also move a bit. You want it all the way to the edge with only about a centimeter to spare. You want it evenly spread out. Some people use a spatula. I'll just use water. Okay, the filling is spread. There is a little bit of a margin around the edges. You don't have to be too precise. I'm going to roll the edges on the short end just slightly to create the barriers to prevent oozing while it's baking. And I'm gonna do it on both sides. Just a little bit, kind of like a rolled lip, if you will. and then I'm rolling towards me. Other people roll away from them, I happen to roll towards me. And you want it evenly rolled. And you can see that the rolled lip is already creating like a little bit of a seal. If it breaks, just patch it back together. You want an even an even roll and the baking mat can help you spread it out and deal with it. And that is what you have. The edges are sealed, nothing's poking out, both edges and you just pat them together. The seam you want on the underside. No matter what you do, that can't be up or it will just blow open. There. Here we have another baking mat. I pull out my drawer, strategically placed, place the lip under the drawer, position my roll, and roll it onto the baking sheet. All then then have to do is position it that the seam still is on the bottom. This dough will get wider. It won't get longer. Dough rises sideways. It doesn't rise long ways. Now we're making the glaze or egg wash, two egg yolks, a little bit of sugar and just a little bit of milk to thin it out so that it can be brushed on. We're brushing the egg wash on all exposed surfaces. Not as thick, you don't want it running all over your baking sheet. You can't avoid a little bit of a run, but you just need like a skim coat. The parts, if you forget a piece, the parts that have the egg wash on it brown a lot faster than um, any part that doesn't have any egg wash on it. Cutting down to the first layer of the filling, just through the dough, to let the steam escape during baking and give it the design. If I don't cut it, or at least don't poke it with a fork a few times, the steam makes its own break in the crust and that 
is not normally as pretty as what we are trying to achieve here. You could just poke it with toothpicks or fork. I just like a zigzag design, so that's what's going on here. We did the zigzag cuts with a knife, but you could also use a fork and poke a design if you wanted to. It might still tear a little bit more with a fork. Mine looks pretty decent too. You know, I'm gonna turn off the heat. And 